want to say praise the Lord, Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly we do thank and praise the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad today, happy Resurrection Day, happy Easter. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for all that he has done for us, to us, and through us. And this is a day of celebration for all Christians around the world, for all those that are looking for hope, those that are looking for deliverance, and our hope and our deliverance is in Christ Jesus. Because he got up from the grave, because he rose on the third day, according to the scriptures, as the Bible says, uh, we can rejoice. And because he lives, we can live also. So we certainly do praise the Lord. We praise him for his mighty works and his acts that he has shown unto us. Jesus said himself, he so Martha, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth, the Bible says, and he shall never die. Then he asked a very important question. He said, believest thou this? And she said, yea, Lord, I believe, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's what we uh, confess on today, our belief and our faith. Uh, in Jesus Christ as being the Son of God, the Lamb of God, that not only was slain before the foundation of the world, but he, was, he also rose. He rose again with power. And he gave us power. And this is, the Bible says, eternal life, that we should know God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent to be the propitiation or the sacrifice that he accepts for our sins. And what shall wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we rejoice on today. We celebrate on today. It's a little different because of our social distancing and things such as that. But it doesn't change the fact that Jesus is Savior. Jesus is the Lord. So we certainly do want to go before the Lord in prayer as we gather in our thoughts and gather in our minds on today. Certainly, uh, we want to pray for men and women and children everywhere. But let us say a special prayer that somebody gets saved, somebody accepts the Lord and Savior as their personal Savior, and uh, be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And then, uh, as time goes on, get baptized in the name of Jesus. Let us pray today that our hearts would be encouraged, that we would be knitted together in love and in unity. The scripture says where two or three are gathered together in his name, he said, I will be in the midst. And that doesn't altogether just simply mean that he will be in our midst uh, when we all are together joined hand in hand, but that also means that he'll be in our midst uh, even over the airways and the, and the avenues from which we are to hear the word of the Lord. And when we come together, when we come together as we are right now, the Lord is in our midst. The Lord is with us. The arm of the Lord is not short and the power of the Lord is near our hearts. So let us go before the Lord in prayer on today. As I've already stated, let us pray for men and women and children everywhere that the Lord himself will save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And let us pray for uh, those that are on the front lines, those who are going through in their spirit and their soul and their bodies. And let us pray for those that uh, uh, may be weak in the faith right now. There's a lot of people uh, are weak in the faith. Let us pray. That doesn't mean that they are uh, uh, weak in the sense of, of, of spirituality, but sometimes, you know, people go through certain things and we go through certain emotions and certain feelings and some people may feel down at this particular time. So it's natural, it's common unto man. Uh, so that's why the Lord tells us to look to him, to be encouraged by him. So let us pray for those that need encouragement and strength on today. And let us pray also too, uh, for, the, for the door of utterance, for those that are, are worshiping 
and those that are seeking after the Lord. And let us pray for our people that are on the front lines, from the hospitals to those that are in the grocery stores and the service uh, compliance people and those that are uh, in certain jobs wherein they take care of certain people. Uh, let us pray for men and women and children everywhere that we stay safe and that we all be covered under the blood. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We certainly do say thank you and praise you for your grace and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. We thank you for power. We thank you for the grace that you have placed upon us. We ask you, Lord, that you strengthen our hearts and our minds, that you keep us, Lord, in perfect peace with our hearts stayed on thee. We thank you, Lord. We elevate you. We give you glory and honor. We certainly do praise you on this particular day, this special day, this high day of celebration. Hallelujah. Because you live, we can also live. Because you got up from the grave. Hallelujah. We can get up from our graves. And we thank you, Lord, for being our Lord, for being our great high priest, for being the Son of God with power. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, for your obedience, your grace, and your strength. And Lord, now as we come before these thy great people, we ask you, Lord, that you bless us even now. Hallelujah. Bless us even now as we go into our Sunday school lesson. Lord, we pray that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This we pray in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Once again, my name is uh, Suffolkin Bishop Elect. Pastor Frankie L. Quinn, uh, the lead pastor here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church in Erie, Pennsylvania. And we certainly do give honor to my lovely wife, lovely wife Tracy uh, Quinn. We thank God for her, and we also thank God for our leadership that is here at Christian Ministries. And I praise God that we are affiliated with the uh, Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith where the presiding bishop is Lambert Wade Gates, and we thank God for him and his cabinet and staff. But we thank God also for our uh, affiliate, um, which is the uh, Nipane States Council, New York, New England, Pennsylvania States Council, where our diocesan bishop is Bishop Clarence Turner. And we thank God for his lovely wife, Lady Dorothy Turner. And we uh, want to get into our Sunday school lesson on today. And it's a very dynamic word uh, from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I often say that and I'm, I'm laughing on the inside because I believe all of God's word is dynamic. Thank you, Lord. And it's life changing. Uh, the scriptures talks about if you apply that word to your heart, if you apply the word to your life, it'll change you. It'll cause things to happen. And God's word is ever revealing. That's why Paul, he commissioned us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And notice you have to rightly divide the word of truth. And what helps us to rightly divide the word of truth is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, which God gives unto us to be a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. So it's, it's, it's hard for an individual to rightly divide God's word without the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost leads you and guides you into all truth. And anybody can have the Holy Ghost if you just simply repent, call upon the name of the Lord and have that desire to be saved. Make a change, make a difference in your life. Uh, we want to go into our lesson. Um, our lesson for today, the subject of our lesson, is the one revealed in the scriptures. And certainly it's, it's Easter time or resurrection time, so you know who that one is. That one is none other than Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who gave his life that we might have life. And notice, I, I like the title on today of our lesson. It says, The One Revealed in the Scriptures. Uh, Jesus is revealed in the Scriptures. And that's why we talk about having the Spirit, talking about having the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost 
gives you, it enlightens you, it gives you understanding. It opens your eyes of your understanding that you might receive the revelation of Jesus Christ as being the Son of God. And Jesus, his whole life is revealed in the scriptures. Jesus did things that was uh, pertaining to and according to the scriptures. There's one thing that sticks out in my mind that uh, Jesus did. He did it, uh, if you allow me to say it this way, because it was written in the scriptures. You remember when Jesus was on the cross and when he was on the cross, uh, he said that he thirsted. And uh, there's in different interpretations um, in the gospels about that particular scene. But in one of the scenes, it said that someone dipped uh, the sponge in the vinegar and put it up to him. And uh, it said he did not drink it. He did not take of it, but he only said it because it was written in the scriptures that he would thirst. The book uh, of Psalms uh, clearly says that Jesus would say that, that he thirsted. And uh, the reason why I bring that up, because Jesus, he paid very close attention to detail. He played very close attention to detail of his life that was written in the scriptures, wherein he didn't even allow that scripture uh, to fall to the ground. The Bible says not one jot or one tittle shall pass away to all be fulfilled. And Jesus was so mindful of, of, of what was written of him to carry out what was written of him. Even that with seemingly small portion was great uh, because it was already prophesied that he would say such words that he thirst. So as we begin to look at the scriptures uh, and understand that the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So therefore, we ought to live our lives as well according to the scriptures. We shouldn't allow one jot or one tittle pass away till all be fulfilled. We need to pay attention. We need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to the word of God and live out our lives according to God's word. So as we begin to look at our lesson on today, it's a very powerful lesson and it's dealing with uh, Jesus and uh, is dealing with um, the saints that were on the road uh, to Emmaus, the road to Emmaus. And when it particularly uh, was taking place at this particular time was um, this was the the third day that uh, Jesus uh, had, since Jesus had died, was crucified, and he had rose, the Bible said. Uh, he had rose on the third day, that third day, uh, which represented Sunday. And uh, he got up from the grave. And then uh, the scripture tells us that some events have taken place prior to this particular scene in the lesson, that uh, geez, the women had went to the tomb and when they got to the tomb they saw the stone rolled away and some angels sitting on top of the stone and the angels uh, asked them a question why, what, why seek ye the living among the dead and when they had uh, inquired Jesus was not there the angel said that he has risen thank you Lord he has gotten up and um, other disciples, uh, Peter and John, had ran to the tomb to see Jesus. Uh, and when they got there, all they saw was the linen clothes uh, in the tomb. And Jesus was not there. And uh, the scripture then picks up in, in Luke, because that's where our Bible study is today, uh, in Luke chapter 24. Uh, and beginning at verse 13, Luke chapter 24 and beginning at verse 13. And the reason why I gave you those that background information is because it's pertinent to the lesson. It gives you a greater understanding as to what's happening in the lesson. So it says in verse uh, 13, Luke chapter 24, verse 13, it says, and behold, two of them 
uh, went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And uh, those that two of them uh, represented uh, 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 those that were there uh, at the tomb. They were at the tomb uh, and there's that commotion that was going on. Uh, they were looking to see Jesus to not to find him alive, but to anoint his body. And when they didn't find his body, these two individuals were going uh, to Emmaus, which was uh, about seven and a half miles from Jerusalem. And you know that they uh, rode on donkeys and they rode on horses, and, but these individuals were also walking. They were walking to Jerusalem. Notice it says, and behold, two of them went the same day uh, to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about seven and a half miles away. And they talked together uh, all these things which had happened. In other words, they were, as they were journeying on their journey, they were talking about uh, Jesus. They were talking about what had happened because uh, in their own mind, they, they not only uh, a week earlier, Jesus rode in on the ass, the fold of an ass, and they were crying out, Hosanna. They were praising. They were lifting him up because he, Jesus had, had been with them in his, in his uh, uh, Messiah state, if you'll allow me to say it, three and a half years. Uh, preaching the gospel, talking and teaching, laying hands on the sick. Thank you, Lord. He was proving to them that he is the Messiah. And when he rode in on that donkey, as they, they were receiving him as their king. But in the tragic end of things, he was crucified. He was put to death. Uh, not, 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 not 20 years later, but three years. But uh, close to five days later, he was put to death. He died, and their hearts were crushed. Their, 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 their hopes were dashed. And they were talking about these things like, man, wasn't we lifting him up just a little while ago? Wasn't we excited about Jesus? And, and wasn't we uh, thrilled about we have finally had our Messiah and that he would liberate us? from the Roman oppressors that, 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 that were mistreating us and abusing us. And finally, we'll have our kingdom. Finally, we'll have our king that cares about us. And so those are the type of things that they were talking about. And then the fact that, you know, <clears throat> uh, where's his body? Well, somebody stole him. Where's he at? We don't know where he's at. My God. And then... You know, they were thinking of these things and talking about these things. And no doubt, uh, their, their faith diminishing. No doubt, their, their thoughts and their minds uh, were, 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 were saddened by what they were thinking about and what they were talking about because all of their perceivedly hopes and dreams were being dashed. So we see here, so as they were talking about these things, what had happened, Verse 15 says, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus drew near and went with them. Now notice, notice the scripture. It says, And as it came to pass, they were walking, and notice I said it was about seven and a half miles uh, to Emmaus uh, from Jerusalem. So they had a long time to walk. And it says, as it came to pass, that while they communed together and, and reasoned, and no doubt uh, that communed mean they were probably trying to comfort their hearts, trying to put the puzzles of the, the pieces of the puzzle together, and, and, and they, were, they were talking and reasoning and with anguish in their hearts about what had taken place. In other words, it would be like somebody that put all their eggs in one basket and all of their eggs got crushed. It would be like somebody that, that says, man, this is the one, 
This is who we're going to put our hopes and our dreams and, and all of our trust in. And, and now we are let down. Thank you, Lord. But notice, Jesus was setting them up. He says, as they were communing and as they reasoned and meditated uh, of the events that were happening, the things that were going on, uh, notice it said that Jesus drew near uh, and went to them. Jesus drew near and went to them. It was a setup. Thank you, Lord. This is one of the appearances of Jesus that is recorded in the scriptures. And Jesus appeared, uh, the Bible says that he appeared often uh, for a space of 40 days after his resurrection. And the reason why Jesus did that was because he needed to prove to his apostles and to his followers that he was alive because uh, our whole salvation rests upon the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Jesus needed to encourage them so that they would be able to take the message that he is alive, that he has risen uh, to the people, to the masses, so that you and I would be able to believe on them as the scriptures have said. In other words, because they wrote about what Jesus uh, accomplished. They wrote about the fact that Jesus got up from the grave and they, they were eyewitnesses. They, they, they handled him. They saw him. Uh, they, and that gave them boldness to be able to preach about his resurrection. Because it, this whole gospel message rests upon uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our hope rests upon the fact that Jesus rose from the grave. Hallelujah. That his body would not see corruption and that when he rises from the grave that he would get up with all power. Hallelujah. That all power represents the ability to save, to save anybody that believes on him. And that's why they had to, to, to trust in him. That's why they had to really know that it was Jesus that had gotten up. Because the scripture says that, that, that when he is preached, the, he has to be, be, be believed upon in order to receive salvation. We have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And then in believing, we can be transformed. We can have eternal life. We can be saved. Hallelujah. And in believing, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because notice what Jesus told him. Hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself here because I'm getting a little excited. Jesus told him, he told him, he said, go ye and preach Hallelujah. To tell all nations. Notice what he said. Baptizing them in the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And the way to execute that, you got to baptize them in the name of Jesus. Because there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. And then he told them to teach them. Hallelujah. Teach them all the things that I have commanded you. And that's what makes us a kingdom. Then we follow after the teachings of Jesus Christ. My God, my God, my God. So as Jesus then, uh, verse 15, and he said, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus drew near and went with them. Prior to this, this is not the first time that Jesus showed himself. The first time he showed himself was to Mary Magdalene. Thank you, Lord, in the garden. Showed him uh, himself in the garden to Mary Magdalene. And when he showed himself to Mary, he said, Touch me not, Mary, because I have not ascended to my God. But he said, Go tell my disciples. Notice what he said. Go tell my disciples that I have risen and that I go to uh, my father and your father and to your God and to my God. Hallelujah. So that's what he told Mary. And Mary went straightway and told the disciples that, or, or the apostles that she had seen Jesus. And now this marks a second appearing of Jesus when he followed these men 
on the road to Amas, uh, Emmaus. And, and what I want to say about this particular uh, sighting of Jesus uh, to these individuals, that uh, little is known about these two individuals. And, and that shows you something about Jesus. Gee, everybody is special in the sight of Jesus. Jesus, he did appear to the apostles. He appeared to them, showed himself alive unto them. But he also took time to show himself alive to the seemingly nobody. Those that were discounted. Those that would not be uh, uh, thought of in the kingdom of God. They are very precious unto Jesus. Never consider yourself uh, an outcast unto the Lord. Always remember that Jesus died for you. For the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, notice that word, whosoever, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord. So as we look here in the scriptures, verse 16 it says, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So at this particular time when Jesus appeared, because Jesus had a plan, he had a mission. And as he appeared unto them, the Bible says that their eyes were holding. In other words, uh, they were unable uh, by divine supernatural power to recognize who Jesus was. And, and that was according to the plan. So, verse 17, it says, And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk, and notice, and are sad? So Jesus was setting them up. Oftentimes when Jesus begins to teach, he asks a question. Uh, that's, that's been his, his modus operandi or his method of operation all throughout the scriptures. Jesus begins to, uh, when he begins to teach, he begins asking a question. So he asked him a question. He said, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? So they were very sad, as you can see. They, they were talking, notice what we said earlier about uh, Jesus and the events that were surrounding Jesus and they were perplexed, they were profound, they were, they were befuddled because uh, they, had, they had recognized Jesus as being the king, being the Messiah, being the prophet. And, and now he's dead. And not only is he dead, we don't know where his body is. What, what has become of him? And they were getting reports that he, he, he was alive, but they had not seen him. So the things, these things were going on in their human mind, that they were saddened by the things that had taken place. And, and because they were sad, they, they, were, they were not only sad, but discouraged. And Jesus, he appeared unto them, thank you, Lord, so that he could uh, uh, give them some information so that they could receive of him uh, that he is alive. So we see here, verse 10, number 18, and it says, and the one, the one of them, whose name is Cleophas, uh, answering, said unto him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? In other words, they were saying, man, where you been? Thank you, Lord. Uh, I don't think that he was coming at Jesus in the sense and saying that, that, that you silly or that you're stupid or that you are you ignorant. But he was basically saying, uh, aren't you from around these parts that you haven't heard and you don't know what's been going on these past few days? Where you been? Thank you, Lord. And, and as they were saying these things, Notice, uh, he's answering and said unto them, Art thou a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days that, that Jesus was crucified? 
that he was put to death, and that he had died. And that, like I said, the thought of that he was sighted, that he was uh, risen from the grave. Notice verse 19. And he said unto them, talking about Jesus, what things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Notice, notice how they described Jesus. Notice how they described him. And, and, and this shows that they didn't really understand who he was. On the surface, it looks like they were giving him praise. It looks like they were magnifying him. But in reality, they didn't have a clear understanding of who he was. Notice, he said unto them, uh, what things? And they said unto him concerning, notice, Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Now, they only recognized Jesus as a prophet. And that's what he was recognized even in his own town. And the Bible says, a prophet is without honor, saved from his own country. And uh, they didn't recognize him as uh, the son of God with power. They didn't recognize him as the Messiah. He that would come and to deliver the people according to the word of God. And oftentimes when we get troubled in our minds and we uh, go through certain things in life, Sometimes we can forget the magnitude of who Jesus is. Uh, he's just not somebody. Thank you, Lord. He's not just the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the savior of the world. And he is the one that has all power in heaven and in earth. But sometimes our struggles, what we go through and, and our own human limitations can cause us not to see him high and lifted up, not to see him as the answer to all, as the, the beginning and the end, as the alpha and omega. Uh, sometimes that uh, when we get troubled in our own mind, we only see our own faults and our own limitations. But we've got to look beyond all of our faults. Hallelujah. And look to Jesus. That's why the Bible says we ought to come boldly to the throne of grace. That we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And that's why we ought to study the word of God. To put God's word and hide it in our heart so that we won't forget especially in times of struggle, especially in times of heartache and pain, who Jesus is. Hallelujah. He's not, he's not just a physician. He's a healer. He's not just a doctor. He's a deliverer. Thank you, Lord. We've got to know uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt, hallelujah, of who he is. He's the son of God with power, that he has divine power. Hallelujah. And that when he comes and when he shows up, he shows up with deliverance. That he's able to change situations. That he's able to defy gravity. Thank you, Lord. He walked on water showing you that he's able, thank you, Lord, to defy gravity. He raised the dead. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Showing us that he has power over death. He got up from the grave, showing us that he has power over death, hell, and the grave, that he has all power, that he is the resurrection, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Lord. And he, he showed us that if you follow after his teachings, that his teachings will give you life. And if you keep your mind stayed on him, he showed us that he will keep us in perfect peace. But sometimes, my friend, I know that trouble when trouble comes and situation comes, that kind of narrows our skew of who he is. That's why David said, oh, magnify. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. 
uh, and let us exalt his name together. When you're going through tough times and when you're going through struggles, you ought to magnify the name of the Lord. You ought to make him greater than your circumstance. You ought to make him greater than your problems. Don't have a narrow view of who Jesus is, but have a greater view. Notice, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You got to lift him up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So notice the scripture. Thank you, Lord. As they begin to ask Jesus the question, in, in, in verse 18, uh, asked them, said, uh, you don't understand and know the things that have come to pass. In verse 19, and they called him uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, uh, notice, they said a mighty prophet. At least they said he was a mighty prophet. <laughs> uh, in deed and in word before God and all people. But they didn't know him as the son of God. They didn't know him as a deliverer, as the Messiah. And notice how, verse 20 says, and, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. And notice, uh, he said that the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. And that's true. They delivered Jesus. They delivered Jesus to be condemned to death. And they did crucify him according to the scriptures. Notice verse 21. But we trusted, notice, that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Now, they had the right perspective, but they had the wrong understanding. You can have the right perspective, but have the wrong understanding. And notice, and he said, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Notice, they believed and they trusted that he would be the Messiah because the Bible prophesied that they would be a Messiah. But they didn't have the right understanding about what the Messiah would do. Jesus not only came to save the Jews, but he came to save the world. And his first time in coming, his first time was coming, was to reconcile, to die for the sins of the world. So that people would become a part of the kingdom of God. And to give his life as a ransom for you and I. And then the Bible says that the church age begins. Wherein everybody that hears the gospel of Jesus Christ preached. And they believe that he is the Messiah. That they can be saved. So that's what God is doing in this age. The Bible says you're saved by grace. And that through faith. Faith in what? That Jesus died uh, for your sins. And not only did he die for your sins, but he rose on the third day. And, and having risen on the third day, if you believe on him, he'll send you back the Holy Ghost. He'll send you back some power so that you can be saved, delivered, set free. Hallelujah from all of your sins. Thank you, Lord. And that's what Jesus was about. He was about setting the captive free, delivering them from their sins. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, so as, as, as the disciples and those that were in Jesus' day, they were recognizing him as the Messiah, but they missed out on his mission. They didn't understand what he came to do. They didn't understand what he is to do in their lives. And my friend, I tell you, a lot of people still have a great misunderstanding even unto today. Some people today come to Jesus uh, for a car, for a house, for uh, to, to, to make their natural lives better. Jesus, I'm going to tell you, and this may seem harsh, Jesus 
Uh, I said, I'm going to soften it up. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Jesus, he cares about your natural life. I was going to say, he don't care much about your natural life. But he cares about your natural life. But, but when it's compared to salvation, Jesus came to save you. That's what he cares about. He came to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. He came to save your soul. Thank you, Lord. And he came to, to break the yoke of the devil from off your neck. That's his primary purpose. All the other added things are just blessings for following after him. And, and, and that's why, you know, sometimes when, when people come to Jesus and their life doesn't automatically get better, they fall away by the wayside. They make, uh, uh, I was going to say stupid statements. See, I'm getting a little, getting a little righteous indignation up in here. Y'all got to forgive me. But people make statements sometimes and saying, well, you know, uh, I tried Jesus and my life didn't get better. I'm still in debt. I'm still living in a hole and, and my situation didn't get better. Yeah, I got a little joy. Yeah, I got a little peace. But my, but my worries and my anxieties, that, that has taken away my joy and my peace, and I'm back in the same situation. Those people don't really realize that Jesus, when he came, he came and gave you life. Hallelujah. And when he said, I come to give you life, I'm coming to give it to you more abundantly. That's why he said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You can ask what you will and it shall be. Hallelujah. So those that understand that Jesus came to, uh, to transform their lives. Those that understand that, that, that yeah, I'm going through but I'm sticking with Jesus. They can be transformed. They can be renewed. For the Bible says that any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And when, when people have the right understanding about Jesus, they can go through their trials and tribulations. They realize that if I don't suffer with him, I can't reign with him. And that's why Paul said, Hallelujah, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Those that got the right look at Jesus, they have faith and confidence that he is the Christ. Ah, you be like Job that said, though you slay me, yet will I trust in thee. Hallelujah. Those are the ones that are going to endure unto the end. And that's the kind of perspective you got to have. Thank you, Lord. That if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. You've got to have hope in Christ beyond the grave. That he rose. Thank you, Lord. I had a one friend, he tells me often, he said, he says, uh, your, 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 your rest ain't down here. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, that, that your rest is in Jesus when he raptures us and takes us away. So we've got to realize that, my friends. Thank you, Lord, and not uh, uh, lose heart and not uh, lose faith on who Jesus is and what he came to do. Jesus came. He died for sinners. He died so that we can be saved, delivered. And in the process of our salvation and our deliverance, he heals our minds. He heals our bodies. And then in the process of that, he does supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But don't forget, the number one priority of Christ is to save your soul. Thank you, Lord. He didn't save you so that you can get a house. He didn't save you so that you can get a bank account. He didn't save you so, so that you can have friends. He saved you so that you can flee from the wrath to come. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God, so that you can, the yoke would be destroyed because of what Adam and Eve put upon us. That's why he came to this world, to save sinners, those that would believe on him. 
My God, my God, my God. I was, uh, years ago, uh, a lady was talking to me. It was a very brief conversation. She was just talking in passing. And she had made mention about uh, the Lord helping her, the reason why the Lord exists, to help her to accomplish her plans. And I thought in my mind, very young Christian, I said, that's not why the Lord uh, uh, is in your life, to help you to accomplish your plans. The Lord could care less about our plans. That's why I know I'm speaking a little hard here today. Thank you, Lord, for some people. But you need to hear this. The Lord could care less about your plans. What he cares about is you fulfilling the will of God. You fulfilling the will of God. And that's what you ought to say. Like Jesus said in the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane, when he was being anguished and pressed out of measure. He said, Father, if there be any other way, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. Notice what he said. He said it three times. Nevertheless, not my will, but what? Thy will be done. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to strengthen you, to give you courage to do the will of God. And that's what matters, the will of God. I often teach, I often teach that, that our thoughts don't matter. My way doesn't matter. But what really matters is God's way. What really matters is God's thoughts. And until we get his mind, until we get his thoughts, my Lord, we won't be able to satisfy his will. But when we get his mind and when we get his thoughts, we'll be able to satisfy the will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And that's a little meat for our, uh, for our spiritually strong people today. Uh, those that are uh, uh, spiritually weak, you know, just, just consider what I say. And God will give you understanding. Thank you, Lord. Don't tune me out. Tune me in. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So we see here, I got to move on. Uh, verse uh, 21, notice what it says. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Notice verse 22. Yea, and certain women also uh, of our company made, made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And that was Mary Magdalene and the other women, the Bible tells you above this chapter, of all of, all of those uh, women that came there to, to put oil and to, to embalm Jesus and to anoint him uh, because they had to bury him with haste and they didn't have opportunity to anoint his body. And uh, Bishop Gates often says, uh, says, brothers, and I like this, he says, brothers, you know, I ain't got nothing against you, but if the women leave my church, I'm going to leave with them because they're the workers. Those are the ones that do a good job, and those are the ones that's going to stick by you. Thank you, Lord. I ain't despairing on the brothers. I love the brothers. Thank you, Lord. But, but if, you lead, if you read the scriptures, the women are always there. Hallelujah. They're always there. Uh, concerned. They're concerned. Thank you, Lord, about the things that be of God. And they are the ones that are there to help the church to keep going, to keep moving. Uh, uh, and, and I'm not despairing on the men at all, but I'm giving the women some encouragement. Thank you, Lord, that what you do for the Lord has not gone unnoticed. Even Paul said, pray for those women that have helped me in the gospel. Thank you, Lord. And the women, thank you, Lord. Be encouraged. Continue to stand fast. Continue to hold up the bloodstained banner. Continue to be encouraged and, and live out your heritage in serving the Lord. And men, hallelujah, I'm going to say to the men, encourage the women. Don't look down upon the women. Uplift them and help them. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, because they are your help meets. They are the ones that will support you. Thank you, Jesus, and help you to get where you need to be in Christ Jesus. 
So as we look here, and then in verse 22, it says, yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished because uh, which uh, were early at the sepulcher. They went early. Thank you, Lord, early. But Jesus had already risen. He had already left. They went early that Sunday morning to anoint his body. Uh, notice verse 23. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And these two angels, the Bible describes them as glistening. And they were sitting upon the stone that had rolled away. They asked him a question. Why seek he the living among the dead? Uh, and they said, we seek Jesus. Uh, and he said, he has risen. Thank you, Lord. He's alive. Even the angels, they testify of Jesus and his resurrection. Remember, they testified to the to the. To the to the servants that were uh, the shepherds that were in the field at his birth. They testified to those shepherds and told them to go to the manger. You'll see a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. The angels have always been involved. And even in the announcement of Jesus, Gabriel announced that Jesus uh, to Mary, that Jesus would be born. They announced to uh, uh, Mary, uh, Zachariah, and Elizabeth, that their son would be special and that he would announce the coming of the Lord. So the angels have always been involved in the announcement of Jesus. Uh, the word angel means word. It means word. That's what the word name angel means. It means word. And they proclaim the word of the Lord, who is Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so we see here, they said, notice, that he is alive. He is alive. He's not dead. Jesus Christ is not dead. But he is alive. Notice. And certain of them which were with us. Went to the sepulcher. And found it even as the woman had said. The women had said. But him they saw not. And they were telling Jesus that we... Couple of us, we ran there. And that's where Cleophas, he was there with them. He was probably in that clan. If you read the scriptures and kind of uh, make an inference that he was there. You know, Peter and uh, John, they were the first uh, apostles that were there because Mary Magdalene went and told them that there's a stone here and I need you to come and move away the stone. So, so, so Peter and John, they ran uh, to, the, to, the, to the sepulcher where Jesus was and, and they found that his grave clothes were there, but he wasn't there. And then we see uh, uh, some of the other apostles and the disciples, they came and they saw the same thing, that Jesus was gone. Notice verse then uh, 25. Then said them unto them, then said he unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe the prophets uh, have spoken, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and have entered into his glory? My God. They were saying that, you know, you don't, you've got to put your confidence and trust in the Lord. And and the scriptures bear out the life of Jesus. The scriptures bear out the life of Jesus. And Jesus did everything according to the scriptures. He lived his life according to the scriptures. And notice, hath he ought not Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? And, and in other words, it was written that he would be wounded for our transgressions. It was written that he would be bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace would be laid upon him and with his stripes we are healed. It was written, Jesus told and he prophesied that if you destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up again. He was written as that he would ride in on a donkey 
uh, on a, and a fold and a coat of an ass that he would present himself as the king of the Jews. It was written that he himself would perform miracles, signs, and wonders because he is the great one. It is written that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, hallelujah, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, hallelujah, and of his kingdom there should be no end. My Lord, my friend, you've got to search the scriptures and in searching the scriptures, you'll find out what is written. Ah, and if you search them the right way, the Bible says if you believe on him, as the scriptures have said, then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You got to believe the word. You got to believe the word. And notice, notice, I love this. At the beginning, and the beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He took them from Moses, for Moses said that God was going to raise up a prophet like unto me, him shall you hear. He said from Moses, and he talked about all the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, huh? uh, 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 Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Abaca, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Jesus took them through the scriptures. My Lord, I would have loved to have been in that Bible class. My God, hallelujah. My God, I'm getting excited. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus took them through the scriptures and he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things, notice, concerning himself. It's good for us to know uh, about the tabernacle and the offerings and the sacrifices but you've got to know about Jesus. It's good to know about seasons and times, uh, 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 genealogies and things such as that. But you've got to know about Jesus. Mama, you've got to focus on that which is able to save you and to keep you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If I, if I didn't know when Jesus was born, i got to know why he was born. Thank you, Lord, and what he came to do. That's more important. Hallelujah. We say that he was born in December. Scriptures defute that, say he was born in the fall. But that doesn't matter. All we got to know is that he was born. And that he came and he died. And he rose again on the third day. And when he died and rose again, he got up with power. Hallelujah. We got to know that why he died. He died in your stead on that cross to justify you. Hallelujah. Before God. My Lord, that's what you got to know. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. You got to know that you got power. Hallelujah. Over the enemy. Over the devil. My God, that's what you got to know. Hallelujah. You got to know that there's life beyond the grave. That's what you got to know. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we see here, uh, my time is almost up. Oh, God. We can go on this for hours. Notice verse number 30. And it came to pass, uh, after Jesus was talking to him, we're missing a verse here uh, from 27. We're missing verse uh, 28 and 29. Uh, Jesus had made like he was going to go a little further, but they asked Jesus to stop by, hallelujah, and sit with them at meat. So it came to pass, as he was at meat, he sat with them, and he took bread, notice, and he blessed it. Uh, and he break it and he gave to them. Notice the scriptures. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him. Uh, once, once, notice. 